Yab, it is so great to have you here. Uh, tell us a bit about the research that you do at the University of Idaho. Sure. So um, I do research on population. Uh, you've probably seen all the newspaper articles about Idaho was the fastest growing state or yes. one of the fastest growing states or all these Californians that are moving to Idaho. So I actually try to do research on that. So we have census data that comes out. One of the main things that I am looking at is population change okay. rather than population growth. So I don't know if you know, but between 2010 and 2020, Idaho grew with about 270,000 people, which sounds pretty good, right? Yeah. In that same period, we had 290,000 people, so more, that were actually leaving Idaho. Oh. So most people forget to look at who is leaving Idaho. So if you think about that, that means that actually we had almost 600,000 people moving to Idaho in those 10 years. Wow. Now if you think about in that period, Idaho had a population of about 1.8 million. That means that one out of three every Idaho, one out of three of every Idahoans was not here 10 years ago. Okay. So I try to look at what is this change? Yeah. So if you know, because for instance, if you think about, do just people have the same jobs? Do they need jobs? Did they bring a retirement? Do they have school age kids? So I'm trying to figure out, you know, who is moving to Idaho, who is moving out so that we have a better idea about who's in our, in our communities. And, and how are you doing this? How are you tracking that? Tell us about the methodology behind this. So I work together with the ITD, the Idaho Transportation Department. Okay. Every three months, they send me data of driver's license surrender. Oh. Now, it's not perfect. You know, people don't always do it right away, and it might take a while. Of course, there's also people that don't have a driver's license. You don't capture those. But it means that I almost have up-to-date information about who is moving into Idaho and who is moving out of Idaho. Compare Idaho to maybe how it was in 2015. That's a really interesting question, right? Yeah. So I've been doing this research, I've, I've looked at 2010 until now. Every year between 2010 and 2022, there were a couple more people coming to Idaho. So it was this straight line, people were more and more people were coming to Idaho, fairly straightforward. Yeah. And if, if people ask me, you know, what do you think is gonna happen with Grove and Idaho? I said, well, I would just extrapolate that line. I don't think anything is gonna change. People moving out of Idaho, that was much more going up and down. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the reason for that is that if you look at people that are moving to Idaho, that is national trends, what's happening in, in the US as a whole. Well, people moving out, that's people that are local, right? Yeah. So it's impacted by the local economy, by jobs, new companies coming in. Cost of living. Now, everything changed in the spring of 22. In the spring of 22, all of a sudden, that line that had been going up steadily, all of a sudden dropped. Oh. And that was when the feds increased the mortgage rates. Mm -hmm. So that, that mortgage rate really had an impact on how people were moving. So what we're seeing now compared to 2015 is that we have less people moving. The, the interesting question with that is, is that gonna change later on, right? Yeah. Are, are, if, if interest rates go up, are people gonna be moving again or are they not? And we don't know. Yeah, yeah, right, I mean, because people, I mean, yeah. people are people, they're unpredictable. Right. They're <laughs> but, very unpredictable, But yeah. this information, though, itself is incredibly important, though, because I can imagine we could be utilizing that to at least give some idea of what future growth might look like, right? Yeah, that's... To some that. degree? <laughs> well, to, to, uh, people are unpredictable, just like you yeah. said, right? So you don't exactly know. What I think is happening now is that people only move when they find a job, right? So when yeah. somebody has a job, they move, they have to move, so they will move. But once the mortgage rates go down, then the question is, are we going to go back to the pattern before? So is that straight line that I told you about, is that going to pick up yeah. again? Are we going to have that straight? Or even a different scenario, all those people that didn't move, are they now going to move? So are we going to all of a sudden see a really increase in people moving, and especially in people that are moving because of quality of life issues? I don't think the common individual stops to think about the type of people that might be moving here. Like when you're talking about how does that impact income? What can they afford? Are they taking jobs here? Are they not? Are they still working remote but yet buying it? You know, real estate. Like that's a huge impact on the state yep. and the economy. This is amazing. Where can our viewers go to learn more? Just go to the web page uh, that's on the web that's on the on the screen. On the bottom of the screen. The of go the to the screen. website at the bottom of the screen for more information. Yop, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Thank Some you. Wonderful insight. Thanks for having me. All right, everyone, stick around.